Coming up on this edition of Parkland TV, we bring you good news from around the world, as well as a preview of what's to come on HBO Max. I'm Maya Sikanik. Stay tuned for this and more on Parkland TV. Today is Friday, May 22nd. Welcome to week 10 of Parkland TV Off the Air. To start off our show this week, news correspondent Maya Halma provides insight on President Donald Trump's visit to the Lehigh Valley. Thanks, Maya. As you most likely heard last Thursday, President Donald Trump paid a visit to the Lehigh Valley for the first time. Trump toured a medical distribution facility called Owens and Minor in Upper McCunchy Township. This supply center has been a critical link in the distribution of PPE or personal protective equipment by shipping N95 masks, gowns, gloves, and other important equipment around the United States. Before Trump's motorcade arrived at Owens and Minor, it was greeted by both protesters and fervent supporters, but it received more of the latter. Some Parkland High School students attended to show their support for the 45th president. This clip, courtesy of Parkland senior Julia Nima, shows supporters' reactions to the motorcade turning onto the street. <laughs> Supporters lined Route 100 as Air Force One landed, holding signs and standing in close quarters. There were also hundreds of supporters lining the streets close to the medical facility, showing their support with everything from signs to decorated vehicles to Trump clothing. Many protesters are being criticized for disobeying social distancing guidelines, as almost all of the supporters stood less than six feet away from each other and did not have masks. Here's footage of the crowd, courtesy of Parkland senior Joey Dillette. <laughs> Once he arrived, President Trump spoke to enthusiastic workers about reopening Pennsylvania, as well as a new initiative to increase supplies during the pandemic. This was part of his broad initiative to reopen the country as soon as possible. He criticized Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf on his strict social distancing and lockdown measures. You have to get the governor of Pennsylvania to start opening up a little bit. You have areas of Pennsylvania that are barely affected and they have, they want to keep them closed. Can't do that. At the supply center, Trump also unveiled plans for a 90-day stock of critical medical equipment to revamp the strategic national stockpile of which the country has been seriously lacking during the pandemic. Now, as our country begins a safe and gradual reopening, we're launching a monumental effort to replenish and rebuild the strategic national stockpile. The U.S. government will now stockpile three whole months, much of it made in the U.S.A. President Trump has been criticized for not wearing a mask during his visit, a measure recommended by the CDC and enforced in most public spaces by law. However, sources say that Trump's staff was masked and that he maintained a distance of six feet at all times. He was also criticized by his opponents for using the medical facility tour as a campaign stop, due to the amount of time he spent praising his administration's handling of the pandemic. I started that right from the beginning. beginning. It's probably one of the major reasons that I'm here. It's called America First. We want America first. We love the world. We want America first. With Adam and with the Admiral and with all of these people and Jared, somewhere Jared is here. What they did is incredible. We brought uh, geniuses in from Silicon Valley. And uh, all of a sudden, within a short period of time, we had 11 plants up making ventilators. Uh, and you wouldn't believe what it is. And now we're, we have so many, every state has more than they need. Over the past few months, the federal government has partnered with, with Owens and Miner and other distributors to launch the very successful and historic Project Air Bridge, which is really being thought of and spoken of in glowing terms. And now, you know who says that, right? N1H1. Who says that? Sleepy Joe Biden. Remember? He said the N1H1. I said, isn't it the other way around? They said, yes, sir. But he said it, so it doesn't make any difference. The military that we took over was depleted and in horrible shape. We've now spent $1.5 trillion rebuilding our military. We have the strongest military we've ever had, by far. And this is a good time to have it, too. Parkland TV and Film, I'm Maya Halma. Thank you, Maya. During times like these, it can be hard to focus on anything but the negative. Here to lay in the mood, news correspondent Molly Coleman brings good news from around the world. Hello, 
everyone, my name is Molly Coleman and I am one of the news correspondents for the TV studio. So, although we are in a very sad state with what the coronavirus has taken away from us and how we basically aren't allowed to live our normal lives, I feel like everyone is honestly overhearing all the negative effects the coronavirus pandemic has had on us and our communities. So, this week, I decided to bring some good news. So, I personally know as a senior ready to graduate this year, how difficult this has been for us not to be able to have our senior prom or the graduation we had always hoped for. But in the past couple of weeks, our former president, Barack Obama, and television superstar, Oprah Winfrey, spoke for the Graduate Together High School class of 2020 commencement sending their love and gratitude for the class of 2020. And of course, I couldn't be prouder of all of you in the graduating class of 2020, as well as the teachers and the coaches, and most of all, parents and family who guided you along the way. For such a time as this, the class of 2020, you're also a united class, the pandemic class that has the entire world striving to graduate with you while also showing flashbacks of the trends we grew up with and celebrities talking about their own experiences throughout high school, like Zendaya, the Jonas Brothers, and LeBron James. So watching this made me realize how special the class of 2020 is and how much everyone praises for us because of all the hardships we had to go through this year and the things we had to miss out on that we were looking forward to for the past 12 years. So. It really made me realize how special we really are. So our next topic comes from a small town in Illinois. The stay-at-home orders due to the coronavirus pandemic has forced many families to keep their distance from each other. But this didn't stop one Rockford, Illinois family from finding a way to hug and show their great-grandmother some love. Carly Monero, she's from Rockford, Rockford, Illinois. She created the shield using a window installation kit so that our kids could hug their great-grandmother. So while using a window installation kit, duct tape, PVC tape, and livestock gloves, Carly Marinero was able to develop a safe way for her children to hug their Nana, Rose Gagman, and after nearly two months in quarantine. And our last topic comes from right in our own Parkland community, Adopt a Senior 2020. This trend basically started with all the Parkland moms on Facebook, where each family would adopt a certain senior and drop off food, posters, or any type of activity that would keep a senior busy while in quarantine. Well, thank you so much for letting me share some good news in this time of dreadfulness. Um, I really hope everyone stays healthy and safe for the rest of this time. And remember that we are all in this together. So, thank you. Thanks, Molly. Adding on to the good news, there are only five days left until the launch of HBO Max. Here's Nathaniel Armstrong with more. Streaming services. As we know, they are everywhere. And it seems like there's a new one coming out almost every single day. HBO Max is the next service to join the big, happy, and very successful streaming family. But with so many streaming services out there, what exactly makes HBO Max so different, or at least different enough to make you add it to your monthly bill? Well, I am happy to tell you all of this and more right now. So starting off, you probably know what a streaming service looks like. You have profiles, a watch list, recommendations, all that fun stuff. But these days, what gives a streaming service a leg up on the competition is, of course, content. So let's take a look at what HBO Max has to offer. HBO Max will include, but not limited to, a Game of Thrones spin-off prequel called House of the Dragon, almost every single DC Comics property you can imagine. In the coming years, the service will see a live-action Green Lantern show, which, if popular enough, will actually join the ranks and become canon in the DC Extended Universe. A live action show called DC Superhero High, there are rumors leaning towards the idea that it will be similar to the hit animated series DC Superhero Girls. Sweet justice for the win! I do not know what that means! 
But this show will be live action and instead of a small core team, will feature characters from all across the DC Universe. Strange Adventures, a show that takes on the perspective of civilians while our favorite heroes and villains battle it out. And finally, what just got announced this week after fans have campaigned for years, me included. <laughs> Zack Snyder's original cut of Justice League, dubbed by fans as the Snyder Cut, will be coming to the service in 2021. And many of you are definitely going to be excited about this next one. HBO Max will now be the proud owner of the hit show, Friends. And there is going to be so much more to watch. This is just the beginning. Although like every other streaming services, HBO Max will have content ready to go right at launch. One of which is the- Good Basically, Sesame Street meets your favorite late night show hosts such as Conan, Stephen Colbert, or even one of the Jimmys. I, I still don't know who's who and I'm a twin, so. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I wasn't super confident in this idea when I first heard about it, but after seeing the trailer, not only does the show look like it's going to be one of the cutest shows of all time, it also looks like it's gonna be a huge hit. It's because Elmo's bedtime is 7.30. To me, this also looks like the HBO Max response to The Mandalorian, which did Marvel's, pun intended, for Disney+, Plus, which makes me very interested to see how this show can help HBO Max, both of which feature really cute characters who seem to have an endless supply of merch. Another show premiering at launch is Legendary, a voguing and ballroom competition reality series and will be the first original competition series on the service. I'm ready to see a battle. The goal is to be legendary, honey. One of you will make history while the other one will become history. Legendary. Of course, there's going to be so much more available at launch, but these two show in particular, for one, have trailers, but also just really suck out to me, and I really think there's a lot of potential here for these shows and the service in general. As far as the interface goes, one advancement is the addition of Recommended by Humans feature, which has lists of recommendations created by some of the biggest celebrities and what they personally recommend for you to watch. HBO Max will cost $14.99 a month, although AT&T customers who already pay for HBO will get HBO Max for free as it will be already included in their subscription. HBO Max launches on May 27th. That does it for me today. For Parkland TV and Film, I'm Nathaniel Armstrong. To end this off-the-air edition of Parkland TV, news correspondent Vittorio Rosado brings an update on Northampton's plans for reopening. Since schools across the nation are starting to wrap up their academic school year virtually, many schools are starting to plan ahead for the future, and Northampton Area School District has already laid out a plan for how they are going to handle next year. The district superintendent, Joseph Kovalchik, has stated, quote, I see it right now as us not having more than 15 or 16 students in a particular class, so that's going to be a definite impact in regards to the learning environment, and who can come in at what time into the learning structure, and who might have to be online to do that learning structure, end quote. Kovalchik has stated that this new approach will involve both physical and online learning, as well as the fact that they will have to, quote, no doubt, reteach some lessons that the students would have had to learn on their own at the end of this school year. He also said, quote, hopefully by July 1st, we will have a plan in place that's going to address the fall, as long as the state can come through with what they are planning and what their ex expectations are for the school districts, end quote. Other topics that the districts will soon have to address are how they are going to handle lunches, sports, and other school activities. In ever-changing situations like these, you never know what's going to happen, so knowing that schools are already trying to plan for the future is definitely reassuring. Thanks, Vito. That's all we have for you today on Parkland TV Off The Air. I'm Maya Sikanik. For more content and updates, be sure to follow our YouTube and Twitter at Parkland TV Film. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Stay healthy, Parkland.